ninth grade had a general biology teacher and uh, we were looking at pond water in the microscope and uh, we actually had to turn these uh, lights on and we were looking at aquatic, uh, the leaf of an aquatic plant and uh, as you turn the light on you could actually see the chloroplasts moving inside of the aquatic plant leaf in reflection to the light and uh, of course it was undergoing photosynthesis. And I thought it was kind of amazing that you could kind of see this in a microscope. In other words, this happens all the time in the world around it, but we just take it for granted. But you could actually see it happening. And then to see organisms living in pond water, that was always kind of fascinating to me. So that would be my very first experience with biology, let's say. But it wasn't until I got to high school, I had advanced placement biology, and we had a very dynamic teacher. And uh, that was it. I said, man, this stuff is awesome what we're doing and uh, it may sound kind of dorky to like my kids but uh, there was just something about glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and uh, these biochemical pathways and all this stuff that was going on it's really kind of amazing I think he loved what he did and that came across when you love what you do and you have a passion for what you do people can see that I think that enthusiasm is infectious. And so that's probably what he passed on to us is, look at what we can do in science. Isn't this awesome? And we'd all say, yeah, that's pretty incredible. And I think we do that today. I think as scientists, we're scientists, first of all, because we love science. It's that fascination, that kind of, gee whiz, that's amazing that that can happen. Now you take that over into a project team environment and you say, isn't that amazing? We can develop a drug that may one day cure cancer. That's pretty powerful. Well, certainly in science, as I mentioned, it'd be uh, Mr. Sash, my uh, ninth grade biology teacher, Mr. Clevenstein. Uh, when I got to uh, Pennsylvania State University, I just knew that I was interested in being a scientist. I didn't really know what, you know, the field is so broad and so large. And so I had a cell biology class uh, taught by a guy named Robert Schlegel. And uh, I was kind of fascinated with cell biology, and he encouraged our class to attend this seminar on recombinant DNA technology by a uh, Penn State grad whose name was Paul Berg. And of course, at the time, that didn't mean a lot to me, but it, I found out he was the Nobel laureate. And uh, so as he described his protocol for this recombinant DNA technology, he was the first one to put mammalian genes into a bacteria. And I sat there and it was like I got hit by a bolt of lightning and was like, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. That's awesome. That's unbelievable that you can do that. And so this was really before the age of biotechnology took off and recombinant DNA, before there was a Genentech, before there were many of these uh, recombinant DNA companies. And so I went to see my uh, advisor right after the seminar and I said, I just came back from Paul Berg's seminar and it was awesome and that's what I want to do. How can I do that? And I was fortunate to get involved in an undergraduate research program uh, for a professor named um, uh, Reg Deering. And I did that for about two and a half years and uh, we were actually isolating DNA from cellular slime molds. And uh, so that was really my start with uh, recombinant DNA and this technology.